I filmed this video and then I, I realized something, guys. The charger being used couldn't support the winner. In my opinion, the car that won this test, it didn't really achieve its full potential because the charger was only capable of 350 kilowatt charging, but the Zika 7X can charge at up to 480 kilowatt. Twice a year in Norway, they do the biggest electric car test in the world. They drive the cars from sea level all the way up to a thousand meters elevation and they test 27 different models, compare them against each other. But one of the things that they do, aside from just driving them until they die, so they drive them until there's nothing left, they have to get tow trucks to pick the things up. They also test the charging speed. They test them all from 10 to 80%. That's the, the standard way of measuring them all. Unfortunately, some manufacturers now, they only offer you weird numbers like 30 to 80% or we think it'll charge this fast or whatever. Anyway, this is a real world test and it shows you that some cars that claim they can charge really fast actually can't. And some cars that don't make many claims actually charge really, really fast. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. I'll be at the Melbourne EV show on the 27th, 28th, and 29th. It's going to be a great show. I'll be speaking there. I'd love to see you at one of my live shows. I'll put a link in the description to 25% discount on your tickets. Hey guys, I've got uh, a, an EcoFlow Delta II right here and the Delta Pro, which is about four times bigger than this. I've used them over the past two months many times. I didn't think I would, but I've needed them. There's been electrical problems in the house. There's been uh, massive storms here in Australia. They've been absolutely, for me, game-changing, life-saving, up to 45% off sale. I'll put a link in the description, and I think that's on for the next three weeks. So click on that link. You can take advantage and get one of these batteries for a really good price. So 27 cars just been tested in Norway, all using the same chargers. These chargers are capable of 350 kilowatt charging. Meaning the cars that won this, um, they could have charged faster. In fact, the car that came second potentially could have actually done much better. Now I've listed all these 27 cars in order of which cars charged the fastest all the way down to the slowest ones. Here they are, the Lotus Emea. That's a very expensive electric car, costs more than $100,000 US dollars. So probably out of the price range of most people, but it won this charging contest. It did it in 14 minutes. And that means it's the all-time record holder. It beat the Xpeng G6, which came first last year. And the previous test before that one was the Xpeng G9. Both of those cars won the previous test. They did it in 19 and 20 minutes, respectively. The new Xpeng G G6 and G9 are said to be able to charge in 12 minutes, but those were not yet available for these guys to test, even though those cars are now on sale in Europe. So they weren't in this list this year or at least for this test. There should be another one later on this year, and I'll do another video on that test, guys. Second place was the Zika 7X. Now, I think the Zika 7X wins this test overall because it had the combination of a lot of range. It's a really good size family car, not crazy expensive, and it was the second fastest, fastest charging car. So 15 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%. Amazing. I mean, I mean this is a phenomenal vehicle. Plus, it had 593 kilometers of range in the real world from its 100 kilowatt hour Chilin 2.0 battery pack. So yeah, 600 kilometers of range, charging in 15 minutes. That's um, pretty damn awesome. Third place was the Lucid Air Grand Touring. The Lucid Air Grand Touring charged in 16 minutes and it did 828 kilometers of range, even though that was 13% less than what Lucid says it will do. It actually had the biggest range drop versus its claims of any car on this list. But that said, it did go a long way. 830 kilometers is pretty awesome. Audi Q6 e-tron was next with a time of 20 minutes and it drove for 563 kilometers. Fifth was the Porsche Taycan, 21 minutes, 544 kilometers. Sixth, the Audi A6 Avant e-tron, 22 minutes, 655 kilometers. The BYD C-Line, 24 minutes, 523 kilometers. Hong Chi EHS7, 24 minutes and 524 kilometers. The Ford Explorer EV, 25 minutes, 537 kilometers. Skoda Elrock, 25 minutes, 422 kilometers. The Volkswagen ID7, GTX Tourer, 26 minutes. Let's just keep going on down this list. You'll see MG S5 is next with 28 minutes. That's a very good, very, very good charging speed for the MG S5, which is an affordable budget priced 
uh, small to mid-sized electric SUV. Ford Capri was next with 29 minutes, Polestar 4, 30 minutes, Kia EV3, 31 minutes, Tesla Model Y, 31 minutes, the MG Cybester, 32 minutes, Volvo EX90, 32 minutes, Mercedes-Benz G-Class, 32 minutes, very disappointing for a car that costs several hundred thousand dollars. Peugeot, 5008, 34 minutes, Polestar 3, 35 minutes, Opel Grandland, 36. BMW iX was the second slowest car on test, even though it was, I believe, the third most expensive car on the list. Very pricey car. Very disappointing, it only charged in 36 minutes, but it did really do well in range. Really good range at 690 kilometers. BMW Tang was last place at 41 minutes. Although, the crazy thing is, the new BYD Tang would have beaten every one of these cars almost without question. It can charge at a charging rate of 1,000 kilowatt. It has a 1,000 volt architecture. Anyhow, the new one is pretty damn awesome in comparison to the old one. And the new one actually also has a new BYD blade battery. Tesla Model 3 was untested for some reason. It had the second most range in the test at 721 kilometers before it died. And the Voyage Courage wasn't able to be tested either, but it only had 451 kilometers. Now, really, to be fair, the real winner here in this test, if you've gotten this far, kudos to you. The real winner here is not the Lotus Amiya. Uh, let's be honest, because its battery was smaller. The Zika 7X had a bigger battery and it charged in almost the same time. So the Zika 7X clearly had to add more battery charge to its battery in the amount of time that it charged it. So I think the Zika X had the, clearly had the fastest charging speed and considering it had a bigger battery than it has a bigger battery than the Lotus I mean, on test here in this list, I believe it won this charging uh, race. I think it's fair to say. Plus you got to add to the fact it had what, 25% more range than the Lotus Amea at 593 kilometers and it's cheaper and it's a very luxurious car. Uh, hands down for me, I think the winner here is the Zika. L Lucid Air Grand Touring did quite well. I'd be really intrigued to see how well the new Lucid SUV, uh, how well that would go, the Lucid Gravity. Because the Lucid Gravity has 450 kilowatt charging speed, whereas the Lucid Air has 350. It might have actually, it could be, you know, run up there with those, those first and second place charging. Q6 e-tron, I think also was not bad with 20 minutes. Porsche Macan, I'd say it was quite disappointing. In my opinion, you're going to pay several hundred thousand dollars for a so-called supercar. It's priced like a supercar anyway. Then you want a car that's going to be, you know, at least good in one facet, but it's not. The range was average, 544 kilometers, well below many other cars in this list. Uh, and the charging speed was, to be honest, considering it's meant to have 350 kilowatt charging, not that good. 21 minutes. I mean, the Xpeng G6, which is uh, very affordable. I own one. It's very affordable. Proves my point. I'm, I own one. It did it in 19 minutes. So I think it was just under, just just about 20 minutes. So it was faster than the Porsche Macan. It really, to me, that means Porsche have got a lot of work to do. And there's one, probably one reason why their sales have gone down significantly, especially in China, sales down by more than 30% in the last 12 months. The other one here, though, guys, I think, you know, Tesla charging speed, it's, you know, would it have been better on a Tesla supercharger? Possibly. But a little bit disappointing Tesla charging speed. The one plus, though, with the Teslas here was the range of them. They both got more range than advertised. Uh, I mean, the Model Y's range for the price is phenomenal at 652 kilometers. But the charging speed at 31 minutes was a bit disappointing. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Hopefully this helps you. One positive I should point out again is that very affordable MGS5, which you can buy now in several countries around the world. I mean, it charged really fast. And its charging speed is only 150 kilowatt. I don't know how it charged so quickly. Kudos to MG. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.